今年春节，徐州八海母亲事件在中国各地迅速掀起了轩然大波，海内外各大媒体纷纷对这个丧尽天良的丑闻展开了积极的调查和讨论。这一期《华尔街焦点》，我们来关注中国江苏徐州丰县生育八海铁链锁脖女子这个事件的最新进展。巧合的是，我刚好也在春节期间的大洋彼岸。遇见了一位美国八海母亲，并且在大年初一和他们夫妇进行了一次访谈。同样生了八个孩子，他们的动机、心态和社会影响力却是如此不同。感谢您收看《十万个为什么》节目，我是路德。在节目一开始，提醒大家别忘了按赞、订阅、开启小铃铛，希望有更多人能从这个节目中明白真理，受到启发。邀请到一对夫妇 ，Harriet 和 Heidi。嗯、uh, ，So you are missionaries. Yeah. Um, uh, we which organization are you working with? Uh, we right now we、Currently、work with our own ministry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah.、Oh. Um, we have been with Youth with a Mission,、mm -hmm. and we have also done a house of a house of prayer.、Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the reasons why I invited them is because they have eight kids. Eight, eight. <laughs> in China, in Chinese, we we do this eight. Eight. This is eight. Eight. Yeah. So this is so incredible. <laughs> yes. Why did you have so many? Well, well I don't think yeah, it's, why? it's a it's a very good why question because only God knows. That's so well, first of all, we had a boy and a girl. Perfect. Perfect. In the U.S., that's per,、yeah. that's yeah. all you want.、It's、one、perfect. boy, one, one girl. One boy, one girl. Good. Happy family. We'll we'll say. Oh, you're pregnant! Congratulations, right? And then number two, oh, you're pregnant! Congratulations.、Uh -huh. Number three, what? <laughs> Don't you <laughs> know how that happens? <laughs> Very embarrassing. If, during that time, we were、um, not doing very well financially. Yeah. yeah. We were actually living with my parents. Starting a ministry.、Yeah. I really was、um, worried. You know, this is not good financially. It's, it's not good、um, for our home life, and and I was embarrassed because people like look down on that.、Mm -hmm. And、uh, I asked the Lord, like, God, why another one? And the Lord said to me, This is an eternal being.、Mm -hmm. They will. They will be loved by me for eternity,、mm -hmm. and they and they have the opportunity to love me back、mm -hmm. for all of eternity.、Yeah. And I I thought, oh God, how could I not spend a few years of my life、mm -hmm. to to partner with you in this, to make an eternal being?、Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the Lord was speaking really the same word, but in a different way. For me, he was saying,、uh, you know, when we think of success, right? We think cars, house,、yeah. money, yeah. right?、Mm -hmm. But we don't get to keep any of that when、yeah. we go to heaven.、Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if we trust in the Lord and our kids trust in the Lord, they're the only thing that we can make or possess on earth that we get to take with us into heaven. I'm sure you know. With in Y Y, and we talk about、uh, multiplication. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Multiplication is、yeah. if you touch two lives, those two can go out and touch two more lives,、mm -hmm. and they can all get you know. So like, and with that in mind, we're like realizing like we're raising、mm -hmm. multipliers. Yeah. So yeah. we are going to put what we believe. What we yeah we raise know, them up as the truth, disciples, you know, yeah,、mm -hmm. and then they will go out and be multiply cause, our work and do more than we ever could. Like I could go to、yeah. China and change the world, right?、Mm -hmm. But I can't go to China and 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 and.、Yeah. But I can have a child that wants to go to China、yeah. and a child that wants to go to India and a child that wants to go、wow. to wherever. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. You they can multiply. <laughs> With our children, at、yeah. least of eight countries.、Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm studying on, on life, and babies, and in the Bible it always says, and God opened the womb,、mm -hmm. and、yeah. God opened the womb of this person,、mm -hmm. 
So he's in 100% control yeah. of it, yes. even when we yes. try not to. Mm-hmm. And it is God yeah. who opens and who closes, closes the, the womb. womb. That's, That's right. what the Word says. And yeah. we have, I have relatives, we have friends that try really hard to have babies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they can't. And they cannot. Yeah. And so why should we be ashamed of what God is bringing into the world through us? Yeah. Merritt has an aunt who, um, his grandparents had 11 children. My dad's, my dad's side it was yeah. a big family. And one of these aunts asked me mm-hmm. when, when we were pregnant with three, you know, she goes, oh, are you going to have as many as the Lord will give you? And I was like, are you crazy? No way, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> because I was a young woman and I had ambition. I wanted to have a career. I was going to be a, a missionary. But God had a different plan for me. I am a missionary, but I don't have the, the whole idea that I understood. God had a, a better idea, a better dream in mm-hmm. his heart mm-hmm. for me. Yes. So after that, you just... God is in control. <laughs> pregnant and pregnant. Yeah, yeah. God and is in never, control you know, argue anymore, right? Yeah, yeah. It was like, uh, we like to tell our third child, we say, honey, it's because of you that we have all the others. Wow. Because yeah. God spoke to us through you. Mm. You know, we live by faith and we yes. don't have like a salary or yep. something, stable income. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, um, I just wonder how, how you can like feed yeah. so many mouths. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. trust the Lord. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you think of, um, yeah. I, I like what our, our founder's wife says. She says, faith never changes. You will always have to use your faith. You just, some, you just add zeros behind what you need. So whether it's um, a ministry, it dollars yeah, if it's a like, dollars. if it's just, you're single and you're a missionary, or what about like where we are here? This whole place was provided by the Lord. So it has more zeros behind it, mm-hmm. but it's still what God provided for this ministry. Yeah. And so either way, we have to, God wants us to stretch our faith. Yeah. And it has, it has really yeah. stretched our faith. And typically children come one at a time. Typically, there are twins, but like we don't have any twins. But like, you know, you're pre- you can prepare, you yeah. can... Okay, we need a bigger car now. Okay, let's think about that. You got nine Even, months yeah. to think <laughs> yeah. to figure out ways Thanks, to get yeah. the bigger car yeah. or whatever. But you know, we've we've definitely cut corners with costs and stuff. You know, and you know what's funny is <laughs> I didn't know how to cook when we got married. Oh, I was not. So all of it comes like he said, one at a time. God doesn't. You know, people look at us and they go, "Whoa, eight kids! How do you do that?" Well, we didn't just have eight kids all at once you know it and as you just say yes Mm -hmm. you say yes to the lord give him your yes in whatever it is and he will strengthen you and and disciple you in what he's called you to do we've had many adventures many faith story many faith stories Mm -hmm. uh god has called us to go places and we didn't have the money yeah there's times well, actually, when we decided to join YWAM a couple years back, um, we had already committed to go to the Call Azusa. So that's when this a was. Prayer meeting, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, which for us would have been about a three thousand dollar trip. Yeah. Then, so we had three thousand dollars, so we had to pay ahead to do the YWAM conference. Yeah. But we said we're still going. Out to California. Which for us, Michigan to California is a four-day trip, you know. Um, And then when you get to California, hotels are $300 a night, you know. So it's a lot of gas. It's a lot of driving. It's a lot of hotels. um, And uh, we left with $100 in our pocket. So we did this whole trip by faith, uh, leaving home with only one tank of gas and it was completely miraculous how god would we'd be like okay we're we're almost to los angeles and the hotel i reserved is 300 dollars. god we need 300 dollars, and we had nothing Mm -hmm. 
and we're two hours away. We're driving across the Mojave Desert, no air conditioning in the car, so hot. Well, it and then to rain. it started to rain. And it cooled in the off. desert. Yeah, I really mean, neat. God is yeah. just so poetic, yeah. you know, of how he does that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's very prophetic. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. right. Rain in the desert. Yeah, rain you in know? the desert. Yeah, yeah. dry land. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And so um, we we just two hours away my parents said oh there's some money here we'll, we'll run to the bank and put it in your account for you um we like to say the principle that uh, our mentors taught us well if you hear is, god's voice tell you to do something yes when you know god has yeah. called you to do something yeah. when you when you've heard his Gotta voice back on it up. It. i have to back it up with that if yeah. you know god has told you to go somewhere go somewhere to be at a prayer meeting or whatever he might even call if you, you have to do. like a dollar <laughs> Ahead, yeah. I just feel like um, this kind of lifestyle, yeah. like do everything by faith, yeah. will prepare us to survive yes. in the mm. yes. Amen. Times. Amen. Because otherwise, if you always think, okay, I need a plan, I need to make yeah. sure that you know this is possible, <laughs> this is doable, then I think mm. at end times we're gonna be. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'm, Heidi, Heidi I'm a planner. Loves, she loves. I love a plan. To plan. I do. <laughs> I love. She loves to plan. plan. But so many times the Lord kind of God just shuts the he, plan he down. He brings it right to the edge, and he's and the plan won't work, and then and then he brings provision, and I'm like, how did you, you know, Lord? I'll be I'll be trying to like, you know, get the last things in the kitchen to make a meal and be creative because mm -hmm. it's not, you know, I have to really think hard about how to provide um just meals for my family sometimes. Yeah. And then the next day, we, God has provided so much that I'm like, oh Lord, help me remember to not think it's all on me. Mm -hmm. It's not all mm -hmm. on me. Mm -hmm. It's He is a loving Father. So we we have a a Veterans Day in the U.S. and Merritt is a veteran. Uh -huh. uh, so he served in the Air Force and mm -hmm. Veterans Day some restaurants will give any veterans a free meal. Mm -hmm. So we were gonna go to the cheap place mm -hmm. so that we'd get a little bit for the kids and me and his would be free. Mm -hmm. But he wanted to go to the expensive, you know, Red Lobster. <laughs> and I'm like, we can't afford that. They gave a free dessert. That's what they, they gave for the, <laughs> the veteran. But so, like, so it wasn't like your meal was so free. So I'm worried, like, yeah. I'm the planner. And I'm like, I know how much money we have. This is extravagant. We shouldn't be here. And he's like, I want to eat this, you know. So, but he also has a gift of understanding the goodness of our Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and I... God not, gives good gifts. God gives good to gifts. To his children. Yeah. He says, he, he gets like a big platter. I order like the big one. The big yeah. <laughs> meal. And I'm so worried. I go, well... I'm just gonna get broccoli. I live. I'm. I'll and she'll just, just get broccoli. And, and she'll eat off my plate, right? I'm so yeah. worried about the money, the cost of the bill, uh -huh. and so then uh, everybody gets their meal, and I'm eating my broccoli. And the waitress comes up and she says, "Just so you know, your meal has been paid for. They left, but the couple that was sitting here paid for your whole meal." Oh. And I could have cried. I thought, God. And you don't know them. No. And we don't no. know them. And I you felt like the Lord. No. Mm -hmm. No, they saw us. I didn't even recognize who they were. Yeah. But. And that's I happened feel like more than Lord once. Like she's saying, it's happened me. probably 10 times. Yeah. yeah. And the Lord has just really has shown me. He's like, Heidi, you are not an orphan, you are not even my stepdaughter. You are my daughter. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so when you, when you are talking about this, I'm also thinking you know, um, among Chinese believers, yeah. a lot of us think, okay, being a missionary means you have to be uh, starving. <laughs> you have to be, like, live a very uh, miserable yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah, and you, you just give up everything. Yeah. You cannot eat, you cannot drink, you cannot do anything. <laughs> and you cannot have you know, so many kids. Yeah. But actually, God really cares. He mm -hmm. really cares. There are those times where it's like we're down to the last diaper for our baby, 
and we're like, oh. okay, God, there's oh zero in the account. That's so scary. We but need it, yeah. the money, right? <laughs> you know, and there are those times where you feel like you're a pauper or whatever. You know, yeah, you're a yeah, starving you missionary, yeah, right? But then, like she's saying, that's like, the moment when you pray, you cry out. And, and like the next day, the Lord sends two thousand dollar check, or you know, it's like, okay, yeah. sorry, Lord, for despairing. I mm -hmm. forgive me again for mm -hmm. thinking you can't do anything, you know. And then He just, I don't know, you know, He likes that. There is an up and a down to it. I'll say, yeah. you know, yeah. but but our heavenly Father but we trust has him. storehouses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our heavenly Father has storehouses mm -hmm. full of provision, mm -hmm. and we might not see it. It's like mm -hmm. when my two-year-old is crying and he's hungry. He wants a snack. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know what's in my cupboard, mm -hmm. but he just knows that when he needs it, it's put before him. Mm -hmm. And I think God wants us to, to be like a child. He always does. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't care how much money, because he has you know, yeah, unlimited all. money, right? Yes. He yeah. can give you whatever you want, but yeah. you know, he, he wants you to really know yeah, this is from him, and yeah. you can get it from him. So yeah. he wants that trust, relationship. And that relationship. That wants is, interaction. That yeah, is all he. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Who wants a child that just sits here all the time and doesn't talk to us, right? Mm -hmm. No, we want you actually love the child more. That's even if they're screaming at you or something. You know, you want the child to talk talk to me. You know, like, and so he's just wanting us to talk to him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When I was eleven years old. Um, I asked the Lord if he wanted to be, me to be a missionary, and I felt like he said yes. And I always dreamed of going to China. Since I was 11, I still dream of going to China. But uh, as a young woman, I was offered the opportunity to go to Singapore. And I, they speak Chinese, they're Chinese, you know, 80% <laughs> like Chinese, 80 Chinese yeah. is the population. So I thought, yes, I'll go. I worked in a Chinese church and worked with the youth uh, and I always hoped that that would help me go to China. But then God gave me eight children, and I have not been able to take them overseas. But I am instilling those values in my children. Mm -hmm. And God has shown me that, you know, so many things have been started by mothers and the inspiration and the values that they raise their children with. Uh, you know, John Wesley was raised by his mother. We have eight children. Susanna Wesley was 29 of 29 children. Her parents 29th child. And, and I just can't even imagine it. And John Wesley was her 17th child. So she was 29, he was 17. And if you look at and you see any Methodist church in the world, it was yeah. started by that man. Yeah. Anything our children get or feel like they've gotten from the Lord, like an idea or a plan or a picture we, or whatever it is, if we if it's from the Lord and they're like, I feel like I'm supposed to do this, right? And you're like, wow, this is normal for somebody your age to feel like this. Like we want to say, oh yes, we want to yeah. encourage. Like our daughter saying, I want to run an orphanage in China. Oh, that's awesome. That's great. Yes, yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, we want to yeah. empower them yeah. in their dream. Yes. Yeah. Um, one you know, time if they said they wanted to go to college and get a degree, we'd be like, sweet, awesome, do that. Do, you know, whatever. But like, whatever it is, if it's from the Lord, we're like yeah. our, throwing Our it daughter, out. when she, our oldest daughter, when she was um, seven, Seven, eight, maybe six. And she's 12 now. She mm -hmm. had this this little mini Bible. I think she had two of them. And we were at the grocery store. And we had finished shopping and we go to the car. And she says, Mom, I feel I'm supposed to give my Bibles to a lady in the grocery store. And I was like, uh, you know, like, um, maybe just, we need to go, you know, like that's awkward and it's not something normally you just go up to somebody and do. And we were new to that, but I felt like I have to, I have to encourage this because she feels like she heard from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Who am I to say she did not hear from God? That's a very godly thing to do. Mm -hmm. So, but it's just culturally mm -hmm. makes you uncomfortable. As an adult, we maybe give more way to fear, yes. social fear, mm -hmm. and we don't want to stick out. Mm -hmm. And 
we've learned to just say, okay, I believe God's speaking to you and we're going to do something about this and, and help our children follow the Lord in what they feel he's calling them to do. It's very important. Mm -hmm. Maybe the biggest challenge for mothers in homeschooling is not what curriculum you choose. Mm -hmm. It's how you feel about yourself. Mm -hmm. Many of us disqualify our, ourselves. We, we feel unqualified. Mm -hmm. But what I realized is this is exactly why we need to teach our children because we can know. We don't have to be afraid. We need to trust that uh, freedom comes. I believe we are all free to educate. And when, you're f when you feel free, you, you want to learn so much more. I don't know um, how many of us, once you're an adult, you find your passion and you learn it better than any teacher could have taught you in grade school or college because you are free to learn it and you are passionate. So I think when we are teaching, we really need to find our groove. Like, what is it we have to give to our children? Instead of comparing ourselves to other parents or teachers, uh, that brings a lot of fear. Yes. But when we find, I can do this, God has called me to it. It doesn't have to look like my girlfriend here or that mom there uh, or, the, or the school system. Developing a love for learning. I am usually slower. To, I don't push my children to read fast. I'm slower because once they learn to read, they have fallen in love with books. Yeah. And when you can read, the whole world is open to you. Yeah. And they can then mm -hmm. learn by themselves mm -hmm. and you can't push somebody as fast as a self-driven learner will learn. Bible says train up a child in the way they should go, right? And they shall not depart from it. Our daughter that wants to run an orphanage or something will probably help steer her into a direction of social work or Yep. or something that has to do with taking care of children or yep. whatever, you know what I mean? So that kind of thing. So, so it's not just like out for doctor, them. lawyer, physician. You know, it's like see what they're good at. The way they should go. What their passions their natural are. Inclination. That's so good. And then just yeah. kind of yeah. steer yeah. them into <laughs> it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's based off that verse. That's me. That's you know, so it says, train up on a child in a way they should go. Yeah. And as parents, we should be in tune to what our kids are thinking their and hearts, desiring yeah, and what they're passionate about. Because who wants to do a job that's just a yeah. job? You know, yeah. like if they're compassionate about a job, they should be able to be great at that job yeah. and not just doing yep. it, you know. Yep. So many times as a young mother, I was frustrated because my dream was not happening and I was stuck at home, you know, and that's not common for women today to, to just be in the home and have a mom who stayed in the home. Um, but also our home was a broken home because of some of those choices. It wasn't healthy. So I had to seek God and, and let him bring me down the path of this is who I want you to be, a strong mother who cares for her family, who is the strength of the home, who makes it happy, who makes it safe, who makes it smell good because there's a dinner in the oven. Nobody's running, you know, it's so hard to be working and creating that space for everyone to feel safe, to feel loved. And God had a different plan for me, but then I think a lot of women actually have never felt the fulfillment. The identity of one mother. The mm, identity amen. of one mother. And that's huge. And the fulfillment that God has in mm. that. You realize it's something He's given our ancestors yeah. from the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. um, I, I remember learning, because I was out of money, I learned to bake my own bread. And, and when I learned how to knead dough, it's such a funny thing, but there was so much um, pride in it. I could take pride. I made this beautiful loaf of bread. 
And I felt like somehow I was connected to the women all through history who have made this, this gift for their family mm -hmm. and it ministers to the family. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is fulfillment in our callings mm -hmm. when we dream with God and we let Him direct our path. Mm -hmm. Nothing can touch it. No, no mm -hmm. career, mm -hmm. no accomplishment can touch mm -hmm. God's dream for your life. Um, so maybe uh, for closing our conversation, yeah. we can do a prayer. Yeah. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. You are a good, good Father. You see each and every need. You see each struggle or challenge. Father, you see our shortcomings as parents, um, even just in relationships around us with family, God. You see uh, where we are and what we need. And Father, I just pray that your peace would come that surpasses all understanding. We think we know what will give us peace, but your true peace surpasses that. Mm -hmm. You know better what will give us true happiness and fulfillment. Amen. We thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. You are good. We can trust you with it all. Mm -hmm. Lord, we can trust you with our souls. If we can trust you with our eternity, we can trust you with our finances. We can trust you with our families. Lord, I just pray every viewer would would take that step of faith that maybe you've been asking them to take. In Jesus' name, amen. And Lord, I ask that you would give the parents uh, uh, supernatural eyes to like see what their children are good at, yes, okay. see what their children's yes, passions are, yes. and to help guide them into those directions. Yes. Lord, and to pile on the encouragement and um, yeah, to just release, uh, them, release to you, them to, to you, will. yep, and to mm -hmm. into your design, Lord. You designed mm -hmm. us, you designed them, mm -hmm. and you designed us all for a yeah. specific purpose, Lord, with specific giftings. Mm -hmm. And Lord, so we just thank you for all those those uh, uniquenesses that you put in yes, us God. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah. Um, thank you for watching this um, video. Bye. Bye.